Hey everybody, Matthew Larry here. I want to take a second to welcome you to Monday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. Now all this week on the broadcast, we're going to be talking about pleasing the Lord. And friend, it's a wonderful reality to know and to recognize that you and I can live our lives in such a way that we please the Lord. We can do things that bless the Lord, that minister to Him, that please Him. Now, in talking about pleasing the Lord, it's vitally important that we understand this reality, that as believers, you and I right now are the righteousness of God in Christ, and right now we are loved by God, and there's nothing that we can do that will make us more righteous, and there's nothing that we can do that will make us more loved by God, our conduct doesn't make us more righteous. And our conduct doesn't cause God to love us more. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For He has made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. The word righteousness there means a condition acceptable to God. You see, before you and I were born again, on, our, on the inside, in our inner man, our spirits, we were dead on the inside. We were sinners. And the condition of our spirits was not acceptable to the Lord. But when we made Jesus the Lord of our lives and got born again, we became a new creation in Christ Jesus and now today, our spirits, our inner man, the condition of our spirits is acceptable to the Lord. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is our condition. And nothing that you and I do can make us more righteous or more acceptable to the Lord on the inside. And not only that, but God loves us. You know, Romans 5, 8 says, God commended His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, Romans 8, 37 says, we're more than conquerors through Him who loves us. And so God loves us. And there's nothing that you and I can do that's going to cause Him to love us more. I mean, He loved us when we were sinners. And so our conduct does not matter when we're talking about God loving us. Our conduct does not matter when we're talking about being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why? We're righteous by faith. And so when you're talking about those two things, the way that you live and what you do does not affect your condition with the Lord. It does not affect your position with the Lord. Your conduct does not matter. But when we're talking about pleasing the Lord, in pleasing the Lord, your conduct does matter. 1 John 3.22 says this, we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Now, did you hear that last part? We do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And so you and I can conduct ourselves in such a way that we please the Lord. We can please the Lord with our conduct. And so this is where your conduct does matter because you can do things that please the Lord or you can do things that don't please the Lord. And in talking about pleasing Him, what you do does matter because God does not find everything that every believer does pleasing. There are certain things that are pleasing to the Lord, and there are certain things that are not pleasing to the Lord. And if we're doing a bunch of stuff that's not pleasing to Him, then we are not pleasing Him. Now, that doesn't mean that He doesn't love us. That doesn't mean that we're not right with Him. It just means that what we're doing is not pleasing to the Lord. And you know, friend, an overemphasis of grace demeans the importance of our conduct. You know, it's popular around the body of Christ today to hear people say all the time, well, it doesn't matter what we do. And they'll even quote the verse that we're not saved by works. 
And friend, that's true. When we're talking about being born again, when we're talking about being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, when we're talking about being loved by God, what we do, it doesn't matter. But our conduct and what we do does matter in our lives if we want to please the Lord. And so you can't just throw out our conduct and the way that we live our lives and say, well, it doesn't matter because God loves us no matter what we do. Well, our conduct doesn't matter because we're righteous by faith. Well, in talking about being righteous and loved, our conduct doesn't matter. But this week on the broadcast, we're talking about pleasing the Lord. And when you're talking about pleasing the Lord, your conduct does matter. Now, it's important that we balance these two truths together. You know, we have two daughters, uh, Grace, who's seven, and Faith, who is four. And there is nothing they could ever do that would cause me to love them more. And there's nothing they could ever do that would make them more right with me. Because they're my children, they're always going to be right with me. And because they're my children, I'm always going to love them. And that's independent of what they do. But already, even at a young age, there are things they can do that just please me and bless me and minister to me. And then come on, parents, there are other things they can do that don't please me and don't bless me and don't minister to me. But even when they're doing those things, I still love them and they're still right with me. And see, we need to balance those two truths together that I'm not loved and right with my heavenly father because of what I do, but what I do can either please him or be displeasing to him. And come on, friend, it should be in the heart of every believer that I want to please my heavenly father. Come on, say it with me today as you're watching the broadcast. I want to please my heavenly father. I want to live my life in such a way that it is pleasing to him. You know, Colossians 1 verse 10 says this, this will help you live in a way that brings honor to the Lord and pleases him in every way. Come on, friend, don't you want to live in a way that brings honor to the Lord? And don't you want to live in such a way that you please him in every way and in everything that you do? You know, this is how our master lived. Jesus said this, he said, I always do those things that are pleasing in his sight. That was John 8, 29. I always do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Friend, you and I want to live like Jesus lived. We want to do those things all the time that are pleasing to our heavenly father. Come on, say it with me again as you're watching the broadcast. I want to live in such a way that I please my heavenly father. And so, yes, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm loved and that I'm right with God. And that is independent of what I do, independent of how I conduct my life. I'm thankful for that. And I rejoice in that. But I don't want to stop at just being righteous with the Lord and being loved by the Lord. I want to continue on and live my life in such a way that I'm actually pleasing Him. You know, it's in the DNA or the makeup of every child. They want to do things that please their parents. You know, our girls will come to us and say, Dad, look at this. Mom, watch me do this. Look what I drew. Why? Because they want us to go, baby, that is so awesome. That is so good. You're doing so well. They want to please us. And it is in the heart of every child of God that I want to live in such a way that I please the Lord. I want to do things that bless Him. I want to do things that minister to Him. I want to do things that are pleasing in His sight. Now, in endeavoring to live like that and having a heart to live like that, we got to be cautious about not falling into condemnation. In other words, friend, if you don't do something just right or you do something that doesn't please the Lord, just repent. He'll forgive you. The blood will wash it away and then just go ahead and move forward.
But don't start beating yourself up or hitting yourself over the head and start thinking, well, I'm so awful or I'm so terrible because I want to please the Lord and I didn't get it just right. No, no, push that condemnation aside. Hey, guess what? In endeavoring to please the Lord, you're not always going to get it just right. But that's why we have the blood of Jesus. That's why we have the grace of God. And God will forgive you and he will wash it away. But don't ever get into a position where you're falling into condemnation about what you're doing. Come on, we have a heart to please the Lord. And we're going to endeavor to live our lives in such a way that is pleasing to Him. And if we don't get it just right, we're not going to beat ourselves up. We're going to repent. And we're going to endeavor to please Him more and please Him better in all that we do in Jesus' name. This is good news, isn't it, friend? And don't miss any of the broadcasts this week because we're going to teach you by the Spirit of God how to live in such a way where you and I are pleasing the Lord more and more every day of our lives. Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, we are righteous and loved by God independent of what we do. Number two, when it comes to pleasing the Lord, our conduct does matter. And number three, the heart of every believer should be to live in such a way where we are pleasing the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, it is our heart's desire to live our lives in such a way that we are pleasing you. Father, we want to please you in all that we do. And we're asking you all this week on the broadcast for wisdom, revelation, and direction of how we can live our lives in such a way where we are pleasing you more and more every day. And we thank you for it. Jesus name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Hey, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Tuesday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this teaching on pleasing the Lord. We'll see you then.